Hey, what's going on? Dodgers Nation, Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. We've got tons of Dodgers news to get into. James Altman is on the opening day roster. Julio Urias is the opening day starter, and we're going to break it all down and more. But first, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel for all latest Dodgers news and rumors all season long. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you really want to support the channel, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comments section today's Dodgers Nation question of the day over or under 15 home runs this year for James Altman and do you want to see him as the starting center fielder for the Dodgers and also what are your thoughts on the Dodgers naming Julio Urias the opening day starter what are your expectations for him this season let me know down below and for all latest Dodgers news head over to DodgersNation.com so get excited Dodgers Nation the dog days of spring training are coming to an end and opening day is almost upon us. And we got some big news coming out of Camelback Ranch versus that James Outman will be on the Dodgers opening day roster. We have done it, Dodgers Nation. Like I said, he deserved a spot on this Dodgers opening day roster. There was some talk. Maybe he goes down to AAA, gets some more at-bats. He needs to be a regular down there. And what I tell you, no, James Outman is one of the best three outfielders on this team, and he absolutely deserved a spot on this roster. And yes, he has cooled down a little bit during spring training, but if you look at his numbers, he has a 930 OPS. He's hit three doubles, a triple. He's hit two home runs. He has 10 RBIs. He does have 16 strikeouts and 44 ABs. That is a 36% strikeout rate. But look, he's going to need to face big league pitching for him to take the next step in his development. If you do want him to cut down that number, he has to face elite pitching. And that's one of the top reasons why I advocated for him to be on this team because he is not going to grow down in AAA. He has nothing to prove down there. He's raked. He's hit multiple cycles in one week. He's just absolutely done damage down there. The only thing that is left for James Altman is for him to prove that he can be an everyday big leaguer. And the only way you can do that is if you play in the show, if you play in the big leagues. And let's not act like James Altman is 22 or 23 years old, like he's a young prospect like Miguel Vargas. No, he will turn 26 this year may and when you get closer to 30 than you are to 20 it's time to see what they have in you and what i said at the beginning of spring training the reason why i was all in on outman was the upside is the potential that he has because let's face it the dodgers need more production out of their outfield they need another run producer they need a guy that can go up there and do damage and leave the yard and get extra base hits and he has the potential to do that each and every at bat if you look at this outfield right now Jason Hayward, he's hitting 200. He's regressed. That swing is looking a little long again. You're going to need to make some adjustments if you're going to throw him out there. And then there's the incumbent in center field, Trey Thompson, who started all four games for the Dodgers in the NLDS against the Padres. And yes, he was the feel-good story of 2022, but so far he hasn't looked the part in 2023. During spring training, he's hit two for 27. He's hitting 74, 10 strikeouts in 27 at bats and the key for him of course is can he prove that he can hit lefties once again he had those reverse splits last season and if he isn't able to produce against lefties I think this roster will be without a trace a few months down the line so I think he is going to get an opportunity early on they're going to try to see if he can have success against lefties and also if he can come close to putting up the numbers that he did last season because if you look at his numbers last year in 80 games a 142 WRC plus he slugged 507 hit 13 bombs but he really faded down the stretch. In September and October, his last 24 games, he hit 208, had 34 strikeouts and 72 at-bats. And in the postseason, he went two for 13 with six strikeouts. So in his last 85 at-bats, he had a 47% strikeout rate. And on top of that, his 374 batting average on balls in play was the highest in all of Major League Baseball for hitters with a minimum of 250 plate appearances. So the numbers indicate that he's due for a drop-off, and the point I'm trying to make is the Dodgers need James Albin. It's not like they're giving him this opportunity as a courtesy. No, they need him to come up and produce, and Dave Roberts said that he is going to play. Doc told reporters he's going to play a good bit. He's one of the 13 best players in our organization, young or old. I think his talent and performance made it an easy decision. And then Doc would go on to say, I think we just feel that he's going to be able to handle this runway. But it's an adjustment.
adjustment. It's a game of adjustments. And so there are some things he does really well, and there are some things he can get better at. That's not just a young player, but that's anyone. So clearly they have a role for him. And if you look at Major League Baseball, 75% of the league are right-handed pitchers. So he is going to get his opportunities. And yes, he is going to struggle at times. Yes, he is going to have a slump because all big leaguers do, especially rookies. But I think the focus on his strikeouts is a little bit overblown. That's all everyone talks about with James Outman when he's struggling. But look, there's a lot of players in the league that are still very productive despite striking out a lot. Just look at Eugenio Suarez. Last season, he had a 31.2% strikeout rate, but also posted a 131 WRC plus and hit 31 home runs. Kyle Schwarber, he had a 29.9% strikeout rate, still had a 128 WRC plus. So 28% above league average. And then look at Julio Rodriguez. He won rookie of the year, had a strikeout rate of over 25. So as long as James Altman doesn't strike out at a 40% clip and above, like he was in his 16 plate appearances in his four games with the Dodgers last season, I think go out there and help the team. If he's anything above average with his defense, he is going to provide value to this squad. I mean, look at Cody Bellinger last year. He had an 83 WRC plus. So his bat was 17% below league average. So the bar has been set pretty low by Belly as far as offensive production goes. And I think James Outman is going to seize this opportunity. It's not going to happen overnight, but this was the best decision for the Dodgers. It was a decision that I think they made not just out of luxury, but out of necessity. They need another outfielder to produce. And also, too, you're going to want to see what you have in James Altman earlier in the season, because if he can't get it done, then I think the Dodgers will explore the trade market. I know a lot of fans want to see a Brian Reynolds move made, but look, you're going to not want to wait. You're going to want to see what you have earlier in the year to really assess your needs. And if you're going to address them at the deadline, you have a full picture at that point. But James Altman, he was very excited. He talked to reporters and he said, I was expecting to cry or something, but I didn't. It was pretty surreal. It kind of felt like a dream. Like, did that really just happen? I think everybody's got their own little journey. For myself, this isn't the end goal. This is just another step along the way, and I'm excited. And then a few weeks ago, I spoke to James Altman. We talked about making his debut at Dodger Stadium and also what he needs to do to stick in the show. I also want to ask you, too, about your debut at Dodger Stadium because last year you played in four games, all road games. You played at Coors. You played up at Oracle in San Francisco. What's it going to be like to make that debut at Dodger Stadium, and have you thought much about that? It's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. I I, uh, I was able to catch like the back end of uh, like one of the last games of the season, uh, uh, but I was just I wasn't on the in the bench or anything like that. I was just there, and the energy is awesome. I'm excited to play in LA. The fans are super into it. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We know it's hard enough just to get to the show, but it's even harder to stay there. What do you think is the biggest key for you to sticking at the big league level and really fully realizing your potential at the next level? Uh, so I've heard the saying that you get to the show. You if, if you hit, you can get to the show and defense will keep you in the show. Uh, so hopefully for, I, I want to I want to just keep my defense as good as it can be for as long as as long as I can do it. But um, I think that'll help me stick around just because it turns me into more of a reliable guy that can get the job done on the field. And, and, you know, whether or not I'm hitting, at least if my defense good, I can I can affect the game that way. And then some other big news coming out of Camelback Ranch today, and that is that Julio Urias will be the Dodgers opening day starter. Julio will toe the slab when L.A. takes on the Diamondbacks on Thursday, March 30th, a 7-10 first pitch, and it will be the fifth different starter that the Dodgers have had on opening day since 2019. 2019, it was Hyunjin Ryu. 2020 was Dustin May after Clayton Kershaw was a late scratch due to his back barking up. Then 2021, Clayton and Kershaw did make the opening day start and then last year Walker Buehler was LA's opening day starter so their fifth in five years and Julio Arias has absolutely earned this opportunity and the way that the pitching's been lined up it was very obvious that he was going to be the opening day starter and he'll make his final start of spring training today against the Brewers so he'll be on five days rest when LA takes on the D-backs but it's nice to see Julio get rewarded because look let's be honest this could be his last year in 
in Dodger blue. So I like the fact that the Dodgers are showing him and telling him that he is the ace of the future. Look, there is a courting process here. Even though Julio Arias bleeds Dodger blue and he won a World Series with LA, he loves this city. Look, they have to pay him. He has the leverage in this situation because there are going to be plenty of suitors out there that are going to be willing to pay him big bucks. So the Dodgers make him the opening day starter. I like that move. And look, for me, it's just so satisfying to see Julio reach his full potential because at one point, of course, he was the top pitching prospect in all of Major League Baseball, and now he's officially the Urias of the Dodgers. And the numbers back that up. Since the start of the 2021 season, his 2.57 ERA is third in all of Major League Baseball. That FIP at 342 is at 13, but he has been one of the best pitchers in the game and one of the most dependable pitchers in the game and a rock for this Dodgers rotation. Since the start of the 2020 season, Julio has pitched in 415 and two-thirds innings. He's made 73 starts. The next closest on the Dodgers in that span is Walker Buehler, who's pitched 309 and a-thirds innings and has made 53 starts. Kirsch is at 306 and a third. So just look at that difference there. 415 and two-thirds innings. Second is Bueller at 309 and a third. So you're talking about almost six innings per start by Julio. Also has the lowest ERA on the team in that span at 268. So this is a guy that has earned this. And I think this Dodgers organization is absolutely sending a message that, hey, Julio Urias, this is your time. This could be the first of many opening day stars for you. Kirsch, of course, had that run of eight straight opening day stars from 2011 to 2018. But Julio could get himself four or five in a row if he signs back with the Dodgers. And I think this year he's absolutely going to make his first career all-star team. I think he will be in the Cy Young mix. And I want to see him carry this Dodgers team on his back as a starting pitcher through the postseason. If he does that, we could be talking about a $250-plus million deal for Julio Urias. So you always love to see guys during their platform years, during their contract seasons, because they're going to want to post. They're going to want to play through injuries if they have any and they're going to want to get big numbers. And we'll see how the Dodgers will use him this year. Will they keep the bubble wrap on? Will they let him go deeper into games? Or will they say, hey, this could be his last year with us. Let's ride him until the wheels fall off. So it's something very interesting to look at this season. But let me know down below in the comment section, what are your thoughts on James Altman making the Dodgers opening day roster? How many home runs do you think he'll hit this season? I'm going to say 25 home runs for James Altman. Let's go 25 bombs. You can't get him out, man. He's got that power. Really, it's about plate appearances, too. He's going to need those requisite plate appearances and the opportunity. But I think James Altman is a guy that's going to run into a lot of home runs this season. And then, of course, Julio Urias. What are your thoughts on him being named the Dodgers opening day start? There are some fans out there that were advocating for Clayton Kershaw. This could possibly be Kershaw's last year. But I will say Kershaw would never take something that he did not earn. He truly believes in the meritocracy. He's talked about Julio Arias has one of the best pitchers in the game as a guy that's really the ace of the Dodgers at this point. So Kirsch would not even accept that, even if he was offered it, in my opinion. But let me know down below. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball all season long, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.